Have you seen Have you seen what we do in the shadows? You reminded me with werewolves and. and no, and no. What's What's that? Oh my god, you have to watch it. It's so funny. It's a New Zealand mockumentary about um, the Wellington vampire community. So you know, you know, um, Jermaine, right from from Flight of the Concords. Yes. Yeah, and uh, Toka Waititi, I think that's his name. He, he won New Zealand of the Year recently. I probably just pronounced his name completely wrong, but anyway. So it's 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 it's. Uh, that guy that I just said that I'm not going to pronounce again because I probably did it wrong, and mm-hmm. Jermaine, and then a couple of other guys, and they live in not a flat. Jermaine. Jermaine and not What's Jermaine. That? Like, What's Le Pen and not Le Pen. Jermaine and oh, not yeah. Jermaine. Yeah. It's Jermaine and not <laughs> Jermaine. Yeah, that's right. And then two other not Jermaines. Uh, so there's three not Jermaines and there's Jermaine. And they all live in a flat together, and they're all vampires of different ages, right? So one of them's like 300 years old, and I think Jermaine's maybe like 800 years old. And there's a guy who's like, I think he's maybe like 2000 years old and he's just like, he's what you, you know, like Nosferatu kind of thing. He's got like, you know, his face is all fucked up and stuff and he doesn't really talk. He's got these massive fangs and he just kind of lives in a coffin in the basement. And I think his name's Peter. That's right. <laughs> and then there's another guy uh, who's, yeah. So, th- so there's the four of them. And then what happens is, uh, so it's, and it's one of those kind of mockumentaries where, you know, they, they have, they, they, they often go, cut away to, to one of the characters and they kind of talk to the camera in kind of an interview sort of fashion, you know? Um, and so they talk about their day-to-day life and the things that they do and stuff like that. And then um, they meet uh, – yeah, then they accidentally turn, like, a dude, like just a Wellington dude who's, like, you know, 26 or something into a vampire um, accidentally. And then, uh, and then, and then he comes and, and kind of – latches onto their group and like you know and so there's this kind of culture shock thing going on because there's you know these really old vampires who who aren't really that in touch with with modern society or whatever and then this new dude who is because he's he's from that but he's a vampire now and so he is kind of learning how to be a vampire and they're kind of teaching him the things to do but he's also kind of teaching them sort of stuff about you know society and shit like that it's fucking hysterical and then there's like reese darby and his pack of werewolves for, and, and so the werewolves and the vampires are always kind of at each other's throats or whatever. It's oh, it's it's I really really really. Bad. Yeah, you definitely have to. <laughs> <laughs> it took me ages because I remember people talking about it all the time, and I didn't watch it for like two or three years. And because I was always like, ah, I'll get around to it, and I watched it. I was like, I have been missing out. This is amazing. <laughs> definitely worth watching. All right, and the name again was. Uh, what we do in the shadows. And how many seasons of it are there? No, no, it's just it's one movie. It's a movie. <clears throat> oh, right, okay. Yeah, got it. yeah, one movie. Um, the the reviews at the top. It's got if you look on the DVD case, it's just got it's got review. You know, they, they put reviews um, you know, across the front of it or whatever. And I think it's just yeah. got hysterical like six times from like a whole bunch of different things. They're probably not real, but it's just like hysterical, 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 <laughs> hysterical. So you know. Um, they can get away with about. that on a comedy DVD. Yeah, what were we talking yeah, yeah. about? Um, oh, you mentioned Before something vampires. about. Um, Oh yeah, no. I just wanted to say about on that 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 whole like you know beam of light thing. I remember, like I said, I used to I used to watch Steve Shives' um, uh, an atheist read series a lot, and and it actually a lot of the stuff that he uh, talked about and a lot of his arguments and stuff are things that I kind of um, used um, as whenever I was quote unquote debating Christians or whatever. Because he had some really good arguments. So, like um, his his thing about you know uh, Spider Man being real because there there was there was a, a comic book with historical, you know, you, you know, people say, oh, the, 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 the Bible was real because it describes historical um, locations and things like that. And so he, he said, well, Spider-Man must be real because, you know, it's got New York in there, um, that, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, uh, then there was a bit where he talked about, you know, he, I think someone asked the question of what, what would he, what would be something that would make him believe, uh, the Bible or whatever. And his thing was, you know, like if, if the book, if the Bible was like this indestructible, um, you know, obviously magical kind of tone thing that just, that couldn't be altered or changed or, or, you know, or, or any of the things that have kind of happened to the Bible, you know? So, so if, and if it was this, this thing that, that, that actually, behaved in a way that was magical and, and mystical and all that sort of shit. And you couldn't, you can, like I say, you can alter anything. And, and it, it obviously just, you know, that would be uh, a step in the right direction of, of believing that this was some sort of infallible text. But the fact that it's not that, <laughs> cause like, you know, that, that it, 
No, that's a, that's yeah. a really good point. I mean, if the if the Bible was a series of mathematical proofs that you know we still hadn't figured some of them out yet, and you know we spent a yeah. lot of time poring over the Bible trying to figure out what these symbols mean and how they make sense, you know, and then progressively as our technology grew, our ability to understand the equations, um, you know, progressed and they were right. And they mm-hmm. help us build on knowledge, and then we discovered more things, right, like, you know. Yeah, then mechanics, the yeah, string theory. Exactly. If those kind of mathematical formula were in the book already, then that yeah, because like people in the Bronze Age couldn't have known that. But you know, it's not like that. A thing. <laughs> yeah, on that point to what Steve was saying, you know, when I was a little girl growing up Catholic, I remember mm-hmm. being in Sunday school and they were teaching us about uh, after Jesus was seen by the apostles and they did the forty days and then the Spirit of the Lord descended upon them. And they could speak in tongues. And when they were speaking, uh, people in the crowd could understand them. And the story that you know, they would go out and they'd speak in Greek and whatever, Latin. And I thought that was the coolest thing because I really wanted to learn French. Yeah. Because as a child in the book, it doesn't say that it's just babbling nonsense, right? They're speaking and they're being understood by people. And so I really mm-hmm. wanted to believe, you know, to, you know, so that I could, you know, have that spirit because I wanted to speak French. And of course, it never worked. I had to work really hard to learn French. And then I had to work and still working really hard to learn German. Um, so, yeah, that's bullshit, man. I was sold to yeah, false I know, I know. Oh, For fuck's sake. Damn you, Bible, making it like that we could speak French. Yeah, know. damn you. And your tower of Babel. All the atrocity that the Christian faith has brought upon this earth, that's the worst. Yes. Grr. Definitely. Crushing <laughs> the dreams <laughs> of a child. I know. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, that whole child thing. Mm. Yeah, I grew up as a Catholic as well. I remember uh, we we grew up with a Catholic family, and and still part of my parents' family and stuff are still Catholic. In fact, <laughs> funny story. This is actually kind of fun. Um, uh, this 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 kind of speaks to how um kind of lax I've become on the whole militant atheist thing in recent years. Um, I remember in fact the um the uh, a girlfriend that I had who was um, you know, uh, feminist, and <clears throat> when I was very militant atheist, um, her her kind of challenging my priorities on on this kind of stuff but this is this kind of speaks to how much i've kind of changed um from that so the other day i was staying with my family members who are catholic and so i went up and it was easter right so i was staying with them and they've got uh three kids and it was it was easter and they had like a, a mass to go to right and so i got there and they're like oh just so you know um i was staying with them because i needed to go to auckland to to, to do a thing but so I, I stayed with them for the night and they're like i got there and they were like oh just so you know uh you're babysitting tonight and i was like oh great so they have these two kids one of them i think is five and the other is about eight um and they're gorgeous they're really 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 cute and so i was babysitting for them and so they had to they had to go to bed just before the the other the, the father and mother and and the oldest daughter went off to, to mass to, to do their nightly mass thing and um and they wanted me to read them a, a bedtime story i was like sweet let's do this and so they handed me this book and it was like a children's bible kind of dearly it was a um it was a it was like a where's wally because you had to find various things they had like a page over here which had like things that you had to find and then over here they had the pictures and i was describing different bible stories and so <laughs> so i had to um I did. I mean, like I say, it wasn't necessarily had to. I was. I was actually. It was. It was kind of fun. It was a thing. So I read these little Bible stories to the to the kids, and it was kind of funny. I was just thinking, man, I can imagine myself four, three or four years ago this happening, and me being like, ah, fucking da ah, Bible, wah, you know. And I was like, oh, whatever. It's kind of it's kind of cute, you know. So I I read these um these cute little Bible stories about Jesus um turning water to wine or whatever to these little kids and then we're oh so where's where's jesus in this one can we find jesus oh no there he is what about the old man oh there he is oh where's the leper oh, ah! you know and that was so that was kind of cute and so like i say that kind of speaks to my uh my um how how i've kind of changed on that sort of uh front in the last couple of years you know it's kind of interesting yeah i think you know, sort of thing. you know when you have a a self well a consciousness raising as feminists in the second wave would have put it right they're like, oh my gosh, not only am I an atheist, but I'm in a system or at least in the States where, you know, I'm ignored or marginalized or there's other atheists around the world who are being killed for blasphemy. This, And you start identifying with the oppressions of people in the group or maybe you've experienced them yourselves. But, you know, then as you go through your sort of militant phase of, of seeing it everywhere or being very conscious of it, eventually it becomes just sort of part of your life. And... Mm. And when that happens, yeah, then you can kind of, 
you know, find there's more space for realizing, well, a lot of people I care about have these beliefs and they're not bad people and they're not hurting anyone. And, and there are questions yeah. about, you know, enabling more radical, um, extreme religious fundamentalist groups because you're not speaking out against them. I think it's a valid critique, but you don't have to yeah. have it over the dinner table every time. You know? Yeah, totally. totally. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, my, my, the thing that I always used to say and, uh, and still kind of believe, but it's, it's more prevalent, I suppose, is, you know, is, is if you're holding beliefs, as long as they're not impacting on the lives of others, then, you know, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. You know, um, as soon as, as soon as you start espousing ideas and, and beliefs and shit that, um, that are really affecting and, and even, and like diminishing the lives of other people. And that's why I'm going to have a problem. And that's that's where the whole anti-feminist thing comes, because these guys are espousing uh, falsities, misinformation and sort of stuff to, to audiences of people, audience of, ig- of of ignorant people who are happy to lap that shit up. And 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 that that furthers the oppression of various minority groups. You know, uh, that's there's, I, don't, I don't see any other way around that when you've got 500,000 people in your group, in your in your in your audience <laughs> and you're saying. You know, women aren't oppressed, and 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 you know, the the real problem is oppression of white dudes. You know, you're you know, oh, and and Nazis aren't so bad. <laughs> you know, you you're actively making the world a, a, a worse place for for lots of different. I'm going to sneeze. Yeah. And the other thing too is it really dehumanizes the people that they're targeting. I mean, if it would be, it would be kind of one thing if they had some pretty you know serious issues that they were taking up and exploring and looking at both sides and coming to a conclusion you know based on a fair presentation but you know like this week in stupid isn't designed to engage people's critical faculty think um, skills and see both sides of a story mm. that's right exactly that's I not, was that's recently, not what it is at all it's just an outrage machine like you say you know yeah, um, and I, I was recently asked in my comments like oh someone says i want to make i want to address a robust feminist argument can you give me a video and i'll respond to it so i gave them the one on male rape um and patriarchy you know rape culture in the united states because i don't think when they take on an actual argument if they're not gonna cut out your arguments or misrepresent them or just make fun of you uh, i think yeah. they're gonna have a hard time addressing how rape cultures exist in U.S. prisons for men and women, but how men, especially not just in prison, but as rape victims or sexual assault victims in general, face really big social barriers, uh, expectations of what it means to be a man and a victim. And mm. that prevents a lot of yeah. men from coming forward. And that's, you know, that is a feminist critique because it's a critique of patriarchy. Yeah, totally. Um yeah, I was talking to someone the other day about rape culture, um, and because oh, because cause Steve put out that video, which is you know the uh, it was something to do with Trump, uh, you know Trump is rape culture or something like that, and he outlined a whole bunch of things that, um, in relation to Trump, were indicative of rape culture, right? You know the what we think about when we describe rape culture, you know the the um the normalization or um. Or minimalization of uh, of the of of victims um, of of the act and 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 in inside our culture, right? You know, so so um, things happening, uh, you know, as a culture, we have normalized those ideas, the, the, those ideas, and and also when you know victims come forward, uh, or you know, we then uh th- certain things happen you know like victim blaming or or um excusing excusing various um parts of the act or whatever right and so um i know that was a very fluffy there's a there's, there's more concise definitions on the internet i'm not very good at defining things anyway so um <laughs> but but he he went through you know he had that definition from uh whatever website and then you know went through various things that in relation to trump like his grabbing by the pussy thing or or um, <clears throat> various other things that, that line up very, very well with that definition of what rape, what we understand to be rape culture, you know? Um, and, uh, and then I was discussing this with, um, with someone, I can't remember who it was, um, but it was, uh, it's, it's interesting because uh, I, I, again, I, I feel like a lot of these people just don't even bother to get a full picture of what, 
we're talking about when we say that. It's the same with patriarchy. It's the same with with whatever. It's the same with the wage gap. You know, all that sort of stuff. They don't even bother to, you know, they 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 define it in a way that's okay with them, and then say, look, it doesn't exist. You know, they they don't they don't address our actual arguments. You know, it's like the patriarchy thing. You know, uh, I, I go back to this a lot, but Carl's thing about about patriarchy he finds a definition in the dictionary about men running the family and you know like the, the this kind of um ancient patriarchy kind of deal yeah you know? like the biblical patriarchs <laughs> yeah 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 and so finds that and then compares that to society and is like look it doesn't actually exist the patriarchy doesn't exist and ignores anything that aligns with what a feminist would think of when we describe patriarchy you know it, it doesn't well, actually address the the argument it's 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 dishonest and 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 ridiculous you know yeah well it's 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 a failure to distinguish between the individual level and the aggregate level the individual level the private sphere of the home in those cases are where men ruled right but they also ruled in the public sphere they held all the positions of power and when societies are organized like that so that everyone is in a position where if you're a man you can advance maybe based on your class or your race but you have a certain public life that other people don't have mm -hmm. whereas women when they try to enter, enter those traditionally male spaces they come up, <coughs> up come up across uh barriers that are gendered like you know snowsuits that haven't been designed with women in mind <clears throat> and that's you know and of course it's very convenient for him to do that because then he can straw man the argument but his he's just making his viewers dumber well the other one the other one is is thinking that you know patriarchy is this like evil group of dudes sitting around in a room and deciding how to oppress women every day, which, you know, and you like that, that I, I you know, I, I often hear that when, when people try to compare feminism to a religion where they're like, yeah, they've got like this, you know, there's the, there's the evil shadow council or whatever that we're supposed to, you know, that there's no evidence for, but we have to, we have to, you know, be afraid of, and we have to hate that. And then there's the, like the sins you have to repent for, which is like, you know, you know, acknowledging your privileges and and whatever those are your sins that you have to repent from and, and all this bullshit and you know and they talk about patriarchy like it's this like I say like a shadow council crazy thing and that's it's nothing annoying. to do with it's, it's stupid you know yeah uh, you know, yeah conspiracy level on on the level of the Illuminati you know when really yeah. it's just about really everyday things in male dominated spaces especially spaces associated with power or status <laughs> or money. And yeah. an, an example I can think of, uh, someone was doing research about women in the UK parliament, which has been obviously a very traditionally male space and has also adopted a lot of the um, heckling culture that was in the public schools because it's also a classed space. And one wow. woman talks about getting up and giving a speech and a guy on, from the other side, there's a whole bunch of heckling, but one of the guys is just shouting, chanting melons, melons, melons at her. And she's trying to give a speech to represent her constituents, you know, mm -hmm. and it's this kind of hostile workplace. You wouldn't you think about that. Those are people who are elected to office doing that on television. Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> you wouldn't tolerate that in a workplace to have your male coworkers walk when their female coworkers are trying to speak, start chanting melons, melons, melons at them. And yet somehow that's allowed, or I don't know if they've changed the rules now, but at the time, this was, you know, the sort of late 2000, 2007, 8, 9-ish. That was, you know, her experience. She was in office at that point. So, yeah, what, so patriarchy isn't, you know, some kind of conspiracy theory. It's, it's about um, the kinds of norms and practices that um, privilege men in those spaces and also, set, you know, and, and tolerate or minimize women's um being degraded in this case or held back because of their sex fox news is another massive example that i don't know if anybody on um, you know carl or tj or anyone else has talked about but over 20 women now have come forward to complain that they were either sexually harassed or assaulted by roger ailes or sexually harassed by bill o'reilly 20 women and Fox yeah, yeah. paid out millions of dollars to cover it up, and they allowed those two guys to continue to get away with it. Uh -huh. Why is that? Is that an egalitarian system at work? No. <laughs> That's yeah. patriarchy, both in its values and it's who holds power, right? It's Rupert Murdoch, who didn't want to, he didn't care enough, Roger Ailes, who was a sex pest, and Bill <laughs> O'Reilly, who was a sex pest. And I read, I don't know if this is, you know, 
sometimes on Twitter, I've got to kind of, you know, I'm not always convinced by things unless they come from mainstream media or Politico or something. But someone has come forward, a woman came forward to say she was sexually harassed by Sean Hannity. Now, I don't know if that's the next scandal or if that's just some kind of clickbait headline. But, you know, Fox, it it wouldn't sound out of place at Fox. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And so you've got this male-dominated space, which is openly hostile towards women, um, you know, women in that space, you know. And that happens a lot across various different vocations, you know. Why? And people, um, you know, I mean, again, it takes a little bit of empathy. (laughs) But to go, you know when that when there's that hostile environment it's going to be more difficult for women to uh to to make their way into that space and, and there's oh it's just they're freaking it's all about choice they're not choosing to they're choosing not to to you know work in stem fields or whatever but when it's a you know again a little bit of empathy if you can see that you know you know these spaces heavily dominated by men and and male ideals and 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 you know, things like sexual harassment and things like that, it's going to be less likely that women are going to be able to endure all that sort of stuff and then and then get to the higher levels of those uh, those occupations. You know, it, it, how is that that difficult to understand? You know, 